his friend Bobby and his better half and completing another year of togetherness. But first, I've got a few anecdotes to discuss. As some of you know and some of you don't, Bobby and I were roommates at the University of Georgia when Liz busted through. <laughs> and next thing I know, there's an extra person living. But I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about Bobby's good luck. Because he had plenty of it when we were in Athens. First of all, let's talk about an eight e pie rush party that took place in 1968. And Howie, I don't know where you are, but you probably knew about this, being that you were attacked. We were all in Commerce, Georgia, and A.D. Pye was throwing an illegal rush party for all of the incoming freshmen in 1968, maybe it was even 67. Next thing you know, there's a knock on the door and someone saying, IFC, IFC, which was Interfraternity Council, let us in. Well, we were all at the Holiday Inn in Commerce, and the guy that was in charge of A.D. Pye was Eli Wise, and he just decided, we're not opening the door until they leave. So we never opened the door, but guess what? Bobby wasn't inside at the party. He was roaming the, the grounds there at Holiday Inn, and they caught him there and wanted to know what he was doing there. He didn't know what he was doing there. He told him. The bottom line is, he was told that he was not able to rush, was unable to pledge a fraternity because of him being in an illegal area. Well, bottom line is, the luck was, Bobby didn't have to pay any dues. <laughs> so for the first two years, he was a member of AE Pi, but he never paid a nickel for it. All the rest of us had to come up with cash. So that was his first that was the first story of his good luck, as I recall, and I'd say it was in 68. The second one was his near-death experience. Does anybody know about that? Bobby and Liz, Glenn being me, and my day. And I can't tell you who it was because I don't remember. <laughs> we were at Dockery Lake up in north of Dahlonega, not too far from here, for a big camping trip. And it was just the four of us. And it was a beautiful evening. There was trout to be had. We were catching, we were catching trout, we were fishing, making great catches. And the sky was just a little funky. Uh, it was a lot of heat lightning and thunder. Well, the next thing you know, it is pouring down rain. And I had a pup tent, which is a two-man tent, that was made out of canvas. Whereas Bobby and Liz had an eight by 10 deluxe tent. And <laughs> the bottom line was, it was raining so hard that my tent got knocked over with my date and I inside. So we had to jump out of there and knock on the door of the tent next door. This is Bobby and Liz, and we went in and it was raining so hard and thundering so loud you could not hear each other. The next thing you know, Brewster, their dog and my dog at the time, Brewster had his hands way over his ears, scared to death, and we swore that there was a train right through our camp there. Well, that was that. All of a sudden it was quiet, it was done, and I said, well, I guess I'll be going to sleep in in the car now since my tent was totally soaked. And the next morning we got up and we looked around and there was a, a swath, it must have been a thousand yards long, of broken trees and pine trees where a tornado had come within 25 yards of our campsite. And I call that Bobby Goldstein love. Because we could have been dead from that. It was incredible. I can't tell you what happened to the girl I was dating. I had no idea. There was one bad luck story. 
that Bobby had to ensue. And it was probably in 1971 in Peter Street where we were living. And it was Yom Kippur. I don't know who remembered it and who didn't remember it. But Bobby Goldstein was not going to Hill Hill to go and pray for Yom Kippur. He said, and he's not going to do it. And we said, come on, we're going over there. She said, it was take us two hours. And that was in Athens. There was a hill down there. And, you know, we were all going to go. And Bobby would refuse to go. And he was coming to say goodbye to us in the car. And he tripped on these steps leading down to the overhanging garage and broke his ankle. What did that tell you, Bobby? Did you ever learn a lesson? He didn't make it. To Yom Kippur, but he did break his ankle. Okay, a couple of other things of anecdotal value were that Bobby and Liz taught me how to drink coffee. They have it every night and every morning in the kitchen. I couldn't believe anybody our age would drink coffee. How crazy is that? Liz and Bobby always had that coffee every morning. And it played in night. He also lives would make dinner for us sometimes, and it would always be flank steak and broccoli and cheese. And it was just delicious. The flank steak was 99 cents a pound, as I recall, at the Athens supermarket right down the street. And these are things that are very memorable to me, and I'm sure they were to them as well. Um, but those were fun times back then. The only thing I, I could say other than that was one evening we were in Peter Street and I was in the den and we were we were very happy and we were very uh, just we were enjoying the high life as you know. And I was with one of our roommates. It wasn't Bobby, because Bobby and Liz had already gone to bed and they were there to go to bed with Brewster to train him as Bobby was a great dog trainer. And uh, so they were in there and in the phone went. And so I got up to get it. And I said, hello, it's Glenn. I hear it on the other end. Hey, Moo, it's Bobby's father. It's Bobby's father. I said, hey, Mr. Goldstein, how you doing? I said, hey, I'm doing fine. I need to talk to Bobby. So I looked at my other roommate, who I don't remember, I think it was Paul Wagner, and I said, I gotta get Bobby out of that room because his father's looking for me. So I go up and knock on the door, don't hear anything. Knock on the door again, don't hear anything. I started laughing, I couldn't stand it. Next thing I know, the door opens as Liz is looking at me with a dagger eyes. I said, What do you want? I said, Mr. Leon's on the phone. <laughs> He needs to talk to Bobby. And sure enough, Bobby had to come out and take the call. And it was one of the big highlights of living together back in that day. Just one of a few hundred stories. But I'd like to say, so I got so it toes. So it toes. It's not, a, it's not a roast, it's two toes. Bobby and Liz, also known as the Munchkins at some point, may your shared future travels around the world continue to be beautiful times together. And may all your ups and downs remain under the covers. Above all, just remember, don't cuss on us. <laughs> Thank you. 
to everybody. It's really good to see everybody here. This is the uh, this is the Miller family up here. For those of you that don't know, uh, we were here, or at least uh, some of us were here 50 years ago. And uh, this father me wanted to remind wanted me to remind you that I was this tall, and I was still wearing green shorts, and I still had well, I had red hair back then. Um, but we've got a song here that we're going to sing tonight, and it sort of comes from uh, a friend of mine who used to be the camp uh, music director at a summer camp. And at the end of camp, she used to say, I can make him cry in three minutes. So. <laughs>
Did Liz have good taste or what? Thank goodness for Amazon. We can create anything.
I am by now off to college and theoretically living with my roommate, Steve Rosenstock. For some reason, it's very early on a Sunday morning and Liz is at my parents' house and she and my mom are trying to reach me. Liz calls my apartment, not surprisingly there's no answer. Liz reports this to my mom and Helen, bless her soul, without missing a beat, says, don't call Walter's apartment, call Marcy's apartment. <laughs> now, I was not there for the ensuing conversation, but I am told that this time it was Liz's turn to be a bit put out by what might be called evolving standards in the school of household. <laughs> So, in closing, I would like to toast my big sister and brother-in-law. Thank you so much for breaking in mom and dad so that by the time I came along, all the rules were out the window. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm, I'm Mark. I'm Liz's younger brother. Sometimes I always tell people that I'm her older brother. She appreciates that sometimes. But my toes requires prompt. And uh, those of you who know Bobby know that Bobby is very meticulous about his stuff. He takes really good care of everything, his boating equipment, his tools, his camping equipment, everything is always 